Hello, and welcome to Built and Deployed. This is a video series for cloud architects. My name is Bill Wimsat, and I'm a cloud architect at Oracle. And today I'm thrilled to be meeting with Alexander Kochik. He's a systems architect at CLGP. And today we're going to talk about how Alexander and the CLGP team takes racing data. They ingest that data, analyze it, and broadcast over 30,000 data points in less than five seconds to their billions of fans. And they're running across uh, Oracle Streaming Analytics and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Alexander, welcome. Uh, can you give a brief overview of the CLGP flow from their, from the sailing racing yachts, really, to your media partners? So the F-50 yachts are equipped with well over 100 sensors, and um, some of them are simple, such as a pressure sensor, and some of them have uh, more complex uh, uh, data like gyroscopes and uh, GPS. So the data is collected uh, by an onboard uh, central log logger unit and immediately sent uh, to the shore and the Oracle Cloud. Once data is received, uh, it is pre-processed uh, uh, like unpacked, decoded and transferred before being sent downstream for further processing. Eventually the processed data is uh, stored in the database and exposed to the media partners using the REST API. Walk us through the kind of the key, key parts of your, your architecture and what each of those pieces are doing. So starting from the F50 on the left-hand side, uh, it connects to OCI using a one gigabit per second fast uh, connect. And after that, using a dynamic routing get gateway or DRG and a local VCN peering, the data is received by dedicated compute instances for pre-processing. One of them is the MDSS server and the other one is Pi Toolset uh, server. Uh, after the data is transformed from the proprietary format into the JSON format, it is sent to the Oracle streams. Data is then consumed by the Oracle stream analytic uh, pipelines. Uh, their task is basically to process and enrich the data and detect certain events. After data is processed, it is stored in the ADW. Uh, the primary goal of the ADW is to achieve fast complex analytics uh, for further data manipulation and it is also used uh, as a data source for the Oracle REST data services layer. So what is MDSS and how is it streaming over to Oracle Streaming Analytics? Uh, basically is used as a single central communication node application. Uh, basically all the messages are sent either to uh, or from it to one or more other entities, including the F-50 uh, boats. So basically, uh, the messaging goes through MDSS server uh, to and from, from the boats. And, and those interfaces for that uh, marine data sailing server, what are those interfaces that you've got raw data coming in? Uh, tell us a little bit about how you're, you're interacting uh, there with that server. Sure, it uses TCP UDP protocols to send data between two uh, MDSS. Uh, most of the messages are encoded using a uh, Google protobuf uh, message encoding. Uh, and the messages are like uh, bold status, ray status, um, et cetera. So you're ingesting that data, TCP, UDP coming into MDSS, uh, coming into that, that server, and then you're sending it then from MDSS over to uh, OCI streaming. What's the interface at that point? So we use both uh, the binary and uh, JSON formatted messages. So the uh, Google protobuf messages are uh, decoded and, and basically transformed into the JSON uh, messages. Uh, both uh, the binary format and uh, JSON formatted messages are then sent to OCI uh, streams. Can you talk a little bit about your, your Pi servers and the interfaces and, and interconnections there? Uh, so the, the telemetry data from the boats uh, 
uh, is received by Pi servers. And for that, uh, we use the third party proprietary protocol. So there is not much uh, I can tell you about it. Uh, obviously, we use third party libraries, et cetera, to get that uh, data uh, in basically the format that, uh, that we want uh, to use further down the stream. So those are, those are two different streams, one coming from MDSS, one coming from those Pi servers uh, that are then he heading over to Oracle Streaming Analytics. Can, can you talk a little bit about the, the ingest rates that are coming into Streaming Analytics and a uh, little, little bit about the rates of data uh, and the package sizes that you're, that you're working with? The data points from the boats are uh, relatively small, uh, around um, 70 bytes per data point. Uh, However, uh, there is more than um, 30,000 data points uh, per second from uh, all the boats, uh, including the uh, support boats uh, on, on, the, on the truck. The data basically uh, is then consumed and sent to the Tafka streams uh, as fast as possible. Uh, the Oracle streams have uh, basically a limit of one megabit per second for writing and two megabits per second for uh, reading um, data. Uh, we did uh, work with Oracle to actually increase some of these uh, limits to accommodate uh, our use cases. And uh, from there, the, the data is sent basically to ADW uh, every uh, 500 milliseconds or one second depends on the Oracle Stream Analytics pipeline. Uh, the average size at that time of the batches is around 15 to 20,000 uh, messages. So uh, every 500 uh, milliseconds. Autonomous data warehouse as a solution, what has that done for your, your architecture? Helps us to basically uh, provide uh, uh, fast analytics for further manipu data manipulation. And uh, basically, uh, it's a data source for all the REST APIs uh, that we expose to the media partners. Okay. And, and you also have uh, MySQL in your architecture. So what's its function and, and what's that relationship with uh, the autonomous data warehouse? MySQL is basically our legacy database. And to provide this data to media partners, we use Oracle Golden Gate to replicate data from MySQL to Oracle ADW. Now, our long-term plan is to basically replace uh, MySQL with uh, ADW eventually. Can you talk a little bit about um, the, the REST services that are available and how your media partners consume that, uh, consume that data? Sure, the Oracle REST data services or uh, provides the REST API layer for interacting with data and store procedures in our database. So basically uh, all the results and responses are JSON formatted, formatted which is our choice of uh, data interchange format anyway. So uh, the ORDS basically fits very well in our over, overall architecture. So, so you have a public endpoint that, that's, that is presenting the, the, those REST uh, interfaces and the media partners then do pull requests for retrieving data? Correct. Uh, so uh, the media partners can request the data on, on demand uh, using the uh, endpoint, the public endpoint, as you mentioned. Uh, it is basically... Uh, served through the load balancer, uh, Oracle load balancer that uh, uh, we have provision in our, our tenancy. Uh, there is a domain name associated with this load balancer and behind the load balancer is the layer of uh, Oracle REST data services uh, servers. What are the future plans that you have for deployments and taking advantage of this, this initial architecture on OCI? We plan to use uh, Oracle Apex in the future, uh, which is kind of a great uh, service for exposing data for our uh, web users as opposite to our uh, API that is basically for uh, consuming by other systems. Directly on top of the database and our Oracle uh, REST data services. So it is really a natural extension of uh, uh, basically 
presenting data in certain format for our uh, web users and web applications. And, uh, and that way we basically can easily uh, expose that data in pretty much no time using the Apex. So, so we don't have to spend too much time on uh, developing a website from scratch or when we can use Oracle Apex to, to expose data in pretty much a, a day or so. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. I've re really enjoyed uh, speaking with you and look forward to additional races. This has been Built and Deployed. Thank you so much for joining us up with us today and stay tuned for more technical conversations with other OCI customers. Thank you very much.